Some big companies find that breaking up is, well, easy to do. Hello again, I'm Jeff, and this is Plain English, where we help you upgrade your English with current events and trending topics. This is lesson number 420, and that means JR has posted the full and complete lesson to plainenglish.com slash 420. Coming up today, three big corporate conglomerates are breaking up with themselves. They are Johnson & Johnson, Toshiba, and, if you can believe it, General Electric. Does this mark the end of the conglomerate era? Maybe, maybe not. Today's English expression is at first glance, and I have a quote of the week for you. Let's dive in. There's an old song in English called Breaking Up is Hard to Do. Today, though, some of the oldest companies in the world have determined that breaking up may be hard to do, but nevertheless, it's essential. Johnson & Johnson is a 135-year-old company that makes health products. The company said earlier this month that it would split into two separate companies. One would produce consumer products like Tylenol, baby powder, bandages, and mouthwash. The other would focus on prescription drugs, cancer treatments, and vaccines. The breakup would create two separate companies. The consumer-focused one will keep the trusted Johnson & Johnson name. Across the Pacific, Japanese conglomerate Toshiba will split itself into three companies. Toshiba is a 146-year-old company that makes semiconductors, rice cookers, elevators, air traffic control systems, personal computers, nuclear reactors, microwaves. I could go on, but you get the idea. Toshiba announced this month that it would split into three businesses, one each focused on infrastructure, semiconductors, and electronic devices. Now for the shocker. General Electric, the business school case study of a conglomerate. Compared to Toshiba and J&J, &J, GE is a relative newcomer. The company was formed from a merger in 1892. One of those companies in that merger was Thomas Edison's electric company. In the more than 125 years since, GE has made airplane engines, train locomotives, washing machines, and much more. It has owned a radio network, a television network, and a movie studio. For many years, it was also a major lender. But over the next several years, GE, too, will break up into three separate companies. This, though, is a bit of an anticlimax, 
as the company has been slowly unwinding its far-flung businesses for quite some time. When it officially breaks up, it will become three companies where one will focus on aviation, one on healthcare, and another on energy. At first glance, it seems that a chapter in business history is closing. For much of the 20th century, conglomerates were in fashion. A conglomerate is a single company that has many types of businesses. The logic behind these conglomerates is this. Assemble a team of the best managers in the world, and then let them run all manner of business units. The large conglomerate, as it's called, will do better in the market than if these business units were all separate companies operating without the conglomerate's secret sauce. This makes a certain amount of sense. A large company that makes airplane engines and toaster ovens can more easily balance the ups and downs of individual markets. Plus, a larger company can mix and match talent more easily, shifting talented managers to where they are needed most. Investors, too, liked conglomerates. An investor could buy a share of General Electric stock and get exposure to multiple lines of business with just that one share. That was an advantage in the days before mutual funds and commission-free trading made assembling a stock portfolio easy. But the logic behind conglomerates began to fall apart in the latter part of the 20th century when it became clear that these large companies were slow to embrace change, had high costs, and lost focus. Does it make sense that the same company that developed your COVID vaccine, Johnson & Johnson, also makes the Band-Aid you put on your arm after injecting it? Smaller companies focused on just one business line are valued more highly in today's market. In fact, the reason these three conglomerates announced breakups this month is that their companies would be more valuable apart than together. In other words, the stock market values conglomerates at less than the sum of their parts. So, are we ready to declare the end of the era of conglomerates? Not so fast. A new breed of conglomerates is emerging, but the 21st century version is based on data, not manufacturing. Amazon, for instance, is an online store, but it also makes some of its own products, like batteries. It owns a grocery chain, Whole Foods, and is opening retail stores. Amazon also runs delivery, and warehousing services for other retailers, and Amazon Web Services 
is the world's leading cloud computing provider. Sounds like a conglomerate to me. And it's not just Amazon. Alphabet, Inc., the parent company of Google, is investing in self-driving cars. Tesla makes electric vehicles, but also the batteries for electric cars. Apple makes computers and phones, but also streams music and movies. The iPhone maker is also expanding into online advertising. The difference is that today's conglomerates take advantage of big data. The more data that can be accumulated, the more uses the company can put that data to. Expect the next generation of conglomerates to be data-focused, not product-focused. What do you think? Are there any more breakups on the horizon? Some people say 3M is a potential to break up in the future. Other big conglomerates include Hewlett Packard and IBM, but a lot of those companies have been slowly unwinding selling off non-core businesses over the years. HP split into two businesses years ago, and IBM is focused almost entirely on services these days. A lot of the big conglomerates that are left are focused, if not on one product line, then at least on one sector. Honda makes cars, motorcycles, and engines. Procter and Gamble makes consumer products. Nestle makes food and beverages. There aren't too many conglomerates left that do a little bit of everything. Today's English expression is at first glance. This is a bit of a tricky one. We use this when your initial reaction to something might not be correct. So we would say, at first glance, this seems good, but it's really bad. Or you might say, at first glance, that looks like a good value, but it's really too expensive. Have you ever tried to rent a car in Mexico? At first glance, the prices look really good. I just checked the Hertz website, not the cheapest option. For car rentals, at the Cancun airport next month for a week. Care to guess the cost? Less than $26 a day for a week-long rental in peak season. At first glance, that seems reasonable. But let me tell you something about renting a car in Mexico. The price shown on the website does not include a lot of mandatory insurance and other fees. I don't know what the final bill will be, but you're not getting out of there paying only $26 a day. So, how did the expression work in that example? I said, at first glance, it seems pretty reasonable. That means a person's first reaction is likely to be that this is a good price. But that first reaction might not be true. 
dig a little deeper, and you'll find there are fees that are not disclosed on the website. How did you hear it in today's lesson? I said, at first glance, it appears that the era of conglomerates is over. In the lesson, you heard that three big conglomerates announced they would be breaking themselves up over the next few years. Your first reaction might be that the era of conglomerates is over. After all, three of the biggest ones are breaking up. But think about it a little more and you'll discover that a new type of conglomerate is forming. Amazon, Apple, Alphabet, these companies are starting to look like tech conglomerates. At first glance, it might seem that conglomerates are dead, but think about it a little more and you might see it differently. Did you get a new iPhone 13? Not me. I'm sticking with my iPhone 8. I hate the notch, so I'm trying to leg out another year on my ancient phone. At first glance, the iPhone 13 is the same as the iPhone 12. It looks the same, weighs about the same, it's got most of the same features. At first glance, it doesn't look like much of an improvement. But there are some changes if you dig a little deeper. The iPhone 13 has double the storage, a faster processor, longer battery life, and better cameras. At first glance, the iPhone 13 is no different. It looks the same. But if you dig a little deeper, you'll see that Apple made some significant improvements. Today's quote of the week is one that I need to keep reminding myself of. It's from a business coach named Jack Canfield. He's the author of a book called The Success Principles. The quote goes like this. Don't get it perfect, just get it going. It's about overcoming perfectionism in business, especially this idea that before you start something, it must be perfect in its final form. I've been guilty of this kind of thinking before, of waiting for something to be perfect before implementing it. It can be a dangerous trap to fall into. Don't get it perfect, just get it going, says Jack Canfield. Well, that brings us to the end of today's Plain English. If you enjoyed today's lesson, then you'll love all the resources we have for you at PlainEnglish.com. We have multiple membership levels, including a free level, no credit card required, at PlainEnglish.com. The free level includes full transcripts of every lesson, extra English expressions in an area called Learn the Lingo. You get a special homepage and much more. That's all at PlainEnglish.com. Sign up for the level that makes the most sense for you and extend your English learning even after you've finished listening. Well, Coming up on Thursday, it might be time to seriously consider 
moving to Portugal. The Portuguese parliament passed a law called the Right to Relax. At first glance, it seems like a dream. But we'll dig deeper into the issue on Thursday's lesson. See if you still think it's a good idea after you hear what I have to say about it. That's coming up in just a few days. See you then.